Okay. So, last time we left off, we, uh, you entered the, uh, the University of... Uh, shoot, where is it? Of course. Uh, Quabat Universe... Uh, Quabarat University of Xenoarchaeology and Xenoanthropology. And you get here and you see that you, know, you, you landed on the, on the planet. Well, Loss was uh, as a, a graduate student there. He is going to, he was bringing you around to the university. And as soon as you stepped inside of the university, you see the receptionist there being accosted. You know, not really being accosted, accosted, but being surrounded and overwhelmed by, que by uh, uh, elven reporters asking questions. All at the same time, a whole bunch of different questions. I believe one of you guys took a data pad. Yeah, I did. It just has basically your equivalent of notepad on there. It's got Starfinder notepad on there. And they're taking, you know, trying, trying to take notes. And it's a very what are some of the questions they're asking? I like that you asked that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Is it true that Professor Albion's is a racist? Another one is, is does the Quobot uh, University of Xenoarchaeology and Xenoanthropology uh, encourage z uh, xenophobia and blatant racist blah 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 race baiting stuff and the read the reception it's quite a hectic thing in there the fact that nobody really can hear each other and the receptionist looks like she's about ready to poop hey big guy why don't you clear the room that, no, not, not like that. Sorry, can you guys hear me typing? I'll try and mic stuff. We need to go up the stairs, right? It's thick -le. Well, right now, all, there is doors at, that leave this place besides where you came in, but you're, you know, they're, they're, they're closed, and they're, like, key-coded stuff, like, for security stuff, you know? I bull rush the reporters. Really? I mean, if they're blocking our way. Uh, are you serious? I mean, are they going to let us through? We don't need to get upstairs. They don't even. You don't even know where you're going. Let alone, you know, you're going to gore all your ways through. How do the uh, how do the elves react to Grub having like severe allergic reaction to their presence? Uh, they're just kind of ignoring you, and the receptionist is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, the professors are not available right now. Uh, uh, please, please, calm down, please, please, I'm sorry, no, I can't let anybody up, no, no, I'm sure that professor, blah, 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 is not a racist. <laughs> What do we want to do? I mean, aren't we, do we have to get up to see the guy? I think so, yeah. It's about what our purpose in this particular location is, why we're not moving. <laughs> Going somewhere or coming to somewhere. The, the dude... I, think, I think the big problem is we're, we're tr trying to do it politely without causing issues. Yeah. Your your guide, the graduate student Wallace, is like, I don't I don't know what's going on here. This these these journalists weren't here before. You know when I came to pick you guys up. Um, oh, I'm gonna approach the journalist and say, Are you allowed to? What what? Just, think, just what why do you think? Why do you think you're allowed to be here? Say say something like she's. Clearly, this is not public property. Yeah, she's clearly not. They clearly don't want you here right now. Screw off. We're journalists, and we have a right to be here. Blah 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 blah. Oh, that's not true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
raise my hand. I'm gonna pick I up one of them uh, with the scuff, the scuff on their neck. Which hand? Yeah. And then, like I'm, like I'm, 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 I'm like probably four feet taller than they are. Okay. Blues, you said you're gonna try diplomacy. Yeah. I will do a diplomacy check and see if I can convince them to leave on their own accord. One second. Hold on. Why does it do multiple? Okay. Uh, I don't 26 know. plus 1d6. Whoever, whoever did this freaking works this character sheet, man. Jeez. It works fine for me. It's usually just a delay with the uh, Roll20 servers. Okay, so... Like, if you click it, it doesn't come up right away. Give it a moment. Yeah, I always double-click. Uh, okay, so you so have their four, attention, Floos. For diplomacy. It's gloop, or you, since you're raising your hands at them, are you trying to intimidate them or something? Floss is saying... Clearly, the... lady at the desk does not want y'all in here right now I am sure you will get answers to your questions but you're more likely to get those answers if you don't piss off the person that controls your access to the room so maybe it's better to wait outside until they're ready for you guys to come ask questions clearly you have their attention Floos Gloop roll your intimidate Does anybody have anything else? Well, I mean, I'm like sneezing and blowing my blowing my nose on their sleeves, trying to get them to get out. I think I'm just going to slink away from, from Grubbs so that he doesn't blow his nose. Okay, roll me something that involves sneezing. Does anybody oh. want to assist him? What would it be for sneezing? A slide of hand? I have no idea. We're going to go with it, though. Oh, I'll, I'll assist. Anybody besides Floos and Gloop? Can I assist her since I'm doing diplomacy? I can't assist. You did diplomacy. You can't do it. Okay. Actually, it calls for two different roles, so... The slide of hand sure. will work. Is there somebody going to assist him? Uh, <laughs> it's really high slide of hand. Sure. I, I'll give him an assist as I'm... Slipping between the reporters. So you're like wiping snot on him or something? Yeah, well, I'm wiping it off of me. That's the big thing. <laughs> he's He's got a lot of snot going on right now. I'm really oh, allergic wait, to I elves. assist with a one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So this is great. So, like, I don't think the module anticipated people sneezing on reporters, but it is enough. <laughs> the two different roles of DC, you know, 18 works. Okay, you got the attention of the reporters. The reporters are thoroughly disgusted, and then they walk out. Also, Rob, I'm thoroughly disgusted. <laughs> Plus, is thoroughly disgusted. She's like, she's like fucking goblin guys. The receptionist is visibly relieved. Like now, how may I help you, wonderful? To look you up and down. The, the cacophony. Oh, you could call us Starfinders. <laughs> oh, Starfinders. You know, she, she, first, she had some like and some reservations about you know helping Goro plus goblins, but you bring up Starfinders, and she's like, "Do you have some sort of identification?" Show her our Starfinder badge. We have one of those, right? Yeah, you have those tattoos, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Starfinder tattoo. The little rolls glowy light thing plus, in her hands, right? Plus, like yeah. rolls up her. Oh, is it a tattoo in your hand? Yeah, something like that. It's like an implant. I forget. Depends on which scenario you're talking about. The quest one is an imp is a tattoo, and the insignia. Which one did you guys guys get? Did you, did, oh yeah, I think I gave you guys the commencement thing, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. the uh, society subdermal. Yeah. Or subdermal graph. Yeah, I gave that to you guys. So yeah, you have that. Uh-huh. 
Okay, she's like, okay, so Starfires, yes, you're here. Uh, a lot of things have happened since Wallace had left to the airport. To, to the star to the yeah um things are really busy right now would you like to schedule an appointment to be meet professor mulali mul mul mulali I'd like to meet him right now you know i mean or we can just let those reporters back in okay can you roll me a diplomacy then Wow. Twelve. That's two ones. Wow. She types on the computer thing. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and rearrange Professor Mulally's schedule here. All right, you, you gentlemen and ladies are, you know, gentlemen and lady are welcome to go to the fifth floor and talk to Professor Mulali. Let me buzz you in. Right, okay, let me go ahead and reveal some area for you. Nope. It says Professor Mulali in the office door. It says that she's the administrator. Uh, the head person. Uh, the head of linguistic anthropology. That's not a mouthful. That's what she said. I don't think her office is going to be big enough. Yeah, I know. If they would have given me a map for this, I would have, like, you know, been happy. But they didn't, and Starfinder modules are really small for some reason. They're trying to conserve. Like yeah, the, final complaint, the, the door one. is closed. I got it, my well, big friend. Right, I knock on the door. Lightly. And let me tap on the door. A femaleish tuna voice comes over. Then she says, "Please come in." This office is clean, roomy, and orderly, even though it doesn't look like it. Uh, a large desk stands imposingly before a broad window that offers a charming view of a nearby park. And a small table in one corner has a quartet of chairs arranged evenly around it. Near the window is a wide examination table covered with broken fragments of stone, uh, many of which would bear uh, incomplete words or letters in a spiraling text. Several tiny fountains throughout the room, burble, soothing, and shimmering with a soft light. The receptionist told me downstairs, uh, you know, you were here to, you were here to, uh, you were here, Starfinders, their Wallace brought here, and you were asking for information about. And she looks over her notes. Uh, Halukim Zan. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, I believe. I will go with that. Mm. Grub, Grub is going to examine the stones on the table while everybody else is talking. They're very pretty. Uh, she's like, I would love to give you guys more information about that right now. However, uh, my plate has been rather uh, usurped by a colleague of mine. And uh, I'm sure you ran across a journalist downstairs, and I'm still dealing with that problem right now. I'm sorry, but I will not be able to, no, nor will anybody else be able to help you with that as long as we're dealing with this problem. Yeah, there was something about him being racist or something. What was his name again? I, I didn't write down his name. Well, she sighs. It's Alibians 212. That's quite the name. 212 sounds like a sounds like a android name. Well, he's not. He is a 
scroll, 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 scroll. What's the big brain, guys? I don't remember the name. Oh, uh, the contemplatives? Yeah, 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 that one. Contemplative? Yeah. Uh, one of my colleagues, Alibians212, gave a rather incendiary public lecture last night in which he examined a war from nearly a millennia ago and used the cultural fallout from it to rationalize the genocide of, genocide of Formian, Formian species. Even before the Lestuna city-states formed and uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, even before the Lestuna city-states and the Formian colonies signed the peace accords 30 years ago, such brutal conclusions would have been dismissed. Now he is fomenting hate crimes under the guise of, quote, pure logic and anthropology. This is not what the university stands for, but it's what the public now believes. I've placed him on an academic leave and restricted his access to the university resources until we can clear this mess up. Sounds like what you need is an there, image. Control. So you found a war during the gap? No, that was post cap. How long ago? You said 300 years? Sneezing. Sorry. Um, the, it's, it's, I'm sure that's what's in the module. It's just an editing mistake. The gap was only 300 years ago. So if something was 1,000 years ago, that would be during the gap. I'm weird. I, I've heard it explained many different ways that, like, you know, just people remember things, just not, you know, what happened during the gap. So you might have history books about things that happened a millennia ago, but... If it has anything relation to do with the gap, it's probably just, you know, edited out somehow. So Plus, we, like, takes out a little card out of her pocket. Yeah. We know, the, like, we know about a lot of things, just certain things we don't know. Like, things have been edited out in, in time. Somebody went through with the black pen of censorship and erased people's, you know, some people's histories. So they know that the Formians, you know, and the Lestuna have been like, you know, enemies for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's just, you know, sometimes like, it, like there might have been a war started during the gap and you don't remember why you're at war. If, if they had something to do with something that happened in that gap period. Yeah, because like didn't the Elves know they were betrayed by something during the gap? But they weren't sure who? Yeah, they know some basic things. Like, you know, like they know that there's this place called, you know, Galerion, but they don't know where it went. Plus is going to hand the lady a card that says Flush, or Flush Image Consultants on it. Try and sell herself as an image consultant that can take care of this problem. Um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, hold on. You're persistent. That may be coming handy. What the university needs right now is a smooth. Uh, is is in, oh, blah, blah, blah. What the university needs right now is to smooth this over quickly. And Albion's twenty-one-two is not listening to anything I have to say. He's not quite violated enough protocols to be dismissed. Firing him would otherwise be good for optics. I think the media would settle for a public apology. If you can convince him to do that, I will be able to handle the rest. Want to do that, guys? Sounds like you need us to go talk to the professor. He's not listening to me. He's not exactly, uh... We don't see eye to eye on academic concerns. We'll go, uh, talk to this professor. She just talked in quotation marks. Where is this professor at? I will, uh... I will, if you have a data pad, I will go ahead and give Mark his uh, location on... His office on your map. Trex presents the data pad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, property of, uh, you know, Castrovall News Network. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were kind enough to lend it to us. Oh, those kind people. Uh, let's see here. Give me a sense motive. Okay, you know that she's just really preoccupied with the situation. Um, but she really does not understand really what's going on with this. She doesn't know much about the Hello Kim Zan thing. She, she really doesn't. Uh, 
Uh, do you have any other and questions? And Hollows Tian on? is our uh, is the na contact name that we were given about the uh, runes and whatnot. Yeah, he was the dude that a couple hundred years ago, like, uh, did what you know, went to the ruins and stuff. She, she, she starts to talk. I have neither the time nor the inclination to discuss the showboating of amateur exploits. However, my colleague, Dr. Olamea Solstarni, has a strong interest in the ruins of Uklam. Uh, she examines the screen and scrolls through several pages. According to my records, though, she departed on personal leave two days ago. Give me another sense and motive check. Second. Damn, I'm really paying attention to what people are doing today. Yeah. Trex and Flus, you noticed that Professor Mulali is somewhat confused. It's almost this like she slowed down when she said, according to the records, the scientist left on personal leave two days ago. Uh, I think I have something for that. Can I tell if she's under my control effects? She is not. So she's not being my control. She's like, huh? Is there, is there something wrong with the computer? Uh, it looks like uh, maybe Diplomacy. something doesn't make sense to you. Diplomacy, please. I'm just gonna suck today, guys. Level three suck. <laughs> Flutes. She's like, I do not recall approving Doctor of Sostarni's absence. So she went rogue. It says that I personally, uh, you know, approved her leave. I did not do that. Huh. Well, this is a matter for something else right now. I'll look into it. You, you folks, Good. you go ahead and talk to Albion's two twenty. 21 we two and have, we have a uh, computer expert among us they could take a look at your uh, terminal and see if there's been any unauthorized access yes 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 she kind of, just kind of dismisses it and we'll take care of that but right now we need I need you folks to go talk to Albion's 21 two and see get him to apologize to apologize yeah she went through tier one tech support then she got on hold and hang up she got frustrated. Alright, so she gave us the location, right? Yes. It's nearby. Let me go ahead and move you. Do, 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 do. Really wish that would have had like a university map. I mean, this would have been a great thing to put on here. I think they probably left it alone just because it's it's all one of those things you could just kind of theater of the mind. Yeah, I know, but that's not fair. That's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, if there's nothing to play with on the screen, people get tired and fall asleep. Exactly. So, there's a door, and it says Professor Albion's 21-2. Does anybody have any kind of academic skills? I've got knowledges. <laughs> what kind of knowledges do you have? All of them. Link is an academic skill, right? Is what? I added some ranks to life science. I, I've been doing some. some uh... I have life science, mysticism, physical science, engineering, computers. Got some culture. Plus, has no sciences. She is okay. only speaking. Does anybody have like any linguistics or history, history or anything kind of like that? Linguistics isn't a skill anymore. I know, but that like would all be profession and stuff. stuff, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, Actually, no. we're goblins. We don't have profession. Culture. Yeah, profession goblin. Profession. Well, I can drive stuff really good. So the office is open. You see a floating uh, gentleman there. He says, dust, breeze, and discarded papers litter the floor of this disorganized office. A single chair stands in the corner, and the desks and shelves are crowded with books, scrolls, and statuettes, and loose computer hardware. Does everybody know what a, a contemplative thing looks like? 
It's like a giant. It's like a dude with a giant. Tiny brain. little body, huge brain. Yes. He is floating in the air. And he. Appears. It's easier to fly than walk for these guys. Yeah. He is. Yeah, he's just chilling. Uh, telepathically, he says, hello, welcome. How may I help you? We're here to talk to you. Oh, really? Well, since I seem to have my schedule has been, you know, cl recently cleared, uh, I'm willing to entertain some guests. Do I mind doing the talking? Just listen to the talking. We were told that you made some, uh, shall we say, controversial remarks recently, and you were uh, put on leave of absence by the university. Rex wanted to uh, to use the data pad to, you know, take a look at the video file of the public lecture that he gave. Oh, it was see great. if there's anything interesting that might be helpful in our approach here. Oh, it was a very, it was a very good uh, lecture. You know, very solid. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here if I actually have stuff about the. Uh, hmm. Uh, off, uh, he says, so you guys are talking, you bring it up, it's news reports about how, like, it was just offensive. It was, there's not really much substance to the actual thing. However, once you guys bring up about the offensive thing, a lecture, so he's like, offense indicates a narrow perspective in the listeners. I analyzed ancient Lashtuna army's strategies against their Formian neighbors and concluded that the former's conditioned sentimentality inhibited more effective destructive actions against their longtime enemies. The audience found my conclusion upsetting. He appears to bob back and forth. Other species are endlessly fascinating. You can obviously see that he thinks he's done nothing wrong and he thinks Quite honestly, I don't think you've done anything wrong either. I know. It was a it was a wonderful, personally, I think that, you know, it was an award-winning lecture. It's even However, worse. He, he, uh, he appears to, like, you know, te telepathically make a, you know, like a, like a, a ghast. He's like, it's even worse that that professor lady, she m insists on demeaning me by making me do an, an apology. What would it take for you to do an apology? If, say you felt it in your heart, you know? Logically, I have no reason to apologize, and I'm not going to do so, even if uh, this, even if uh, Professor uh, Mulali has, uh, ha has it in for me. I, uh... This is not the first time she has tried to, you know, tried to harm my career. So Fluss is going to kind of uh, turn to, well, you can't record telepathic speech, can you? Like, you can't record our own device? I don't know. I mean, like, they rec rec recorded the lecture, so they have some way of doing it, right? Well, they can talk. They just prefer telep telepathy. Okay. I see, I, Floss, Floss has to wants to price, you know, so everybody's got a price. Anybody's willing to do something for a price. What's your price? Perhaps by way of apology, you could, uh, you know, offer up some, some uh, more, uh, a broader viewpoint of the situation.
I am on track to attain tenure at this university in several more years, requiring practically twice as long as an observation, uh, requiring practically twice as long an observation period as a Lestuna would. I, uh, I might add, likely because my assessors are compensating for their inferiorities, or real or perceived. This incident reflects an egregious stain upon my record that challenges my advancement and scholarly recognition here. She must agree to erase this insult from my file. I've spoken with Professor Mulali about this, and her judgment is clouded by stress and emotion. If she has truly cared about scholarly intrigue and integrity, she would debate my assertions and said she stoops to censorship and violation of the university's free speech principles. I find myself in strange agreement with you, oh big brain. If you can, if you can convince, he, he you know, stops for a second, being dismissed academically from the university would be even more insulting than doing it in making an apology. I am willing to do so if you can make Professor Mulali have three concessions. One, cancel my academic suspension. And restore number two, restore my access to the university's restricted collections and to pardon the whole incident in my tenure review file. That sounds reasonable. Would you be willing to accept a different penalty in exchange for removing it from your file? So if she, say, wanted to issue a small docket to your pay, or a month. I should have academic free uh, freedom as a as any Lish Tuna uni uh, professor has here. I would prefer this whole incident be ignored once I give my apology, and no punitive punishment come towards me. I think, in light of the events and the fact that uh, they would not want to promote racism, that would be no issue. Guys, guys. So do we want to go back to the professor now? Or do we want to see if we can talk? I do. Him? I think we should go back and talk to P Professor Mulally and tell her that we've gotten him to agree, provided certain terms are met. Can I do a sense motive on his on his thing? Like how how committed is he to his his sure. terms? Thirteen probably doesn't tell me anything important. Ah, uh, he looks brainy. Can do a perception check on the room to see if there's anything like that looks out of place for his study or office. Okay. Well, I can't either. Nothing looks really out of place. I mean, everything's out of place because it's, you know, a disheveled mess. Okay. I'm going back? I think so, yeah. Teleport over to Doctor, you know, Professor Molali, or walk across campus, whatever. Yeah, walk downstairs, down the thing, across the, you know, student union, blah 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 blah. They were all pretty fast. Goro squeezing down the entire thing sideways. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh. 
goblins coming through. Watch out. Well, you better watch those hands, you know, you know George H.W. Bush style. Definitely bump into as many elves as possible. Yeah. Is, is uh, Grub still sneezing on David this? Copperfield. Copperfield. <laughs> you can't you you can't see my air quotes, but accidentally. I'm gonna accidentally. Yeah. Okay, so Dr. Mulali is busy on her computer doing stuff. Hey Mulali, we need to talk. Oh yes, did you finally convince that stubborn man to go ahead and make his apology? Sure, but he has some terms and conditions in which we need to accept. I'm sure. Actually, they're really quite simple, and they make sense. We we think we think it's the best course of action to resolve this this whole thing and put it behind you, and get the apology you want too. Basically, all I ask is when he issues his apology, you restore his position, you restore his access. And you just make sure it doesn't affect his, there's no like blemish on his tenure record, you know? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't want to feel penalized for this. She bulks at the final demand. Please give me a diplomacy check. Rex is assisting. Assist rate. Not that it's really needed, huh? So, 32. Okay. She says, uh... Fine, you get him to issue his apology, he'll have access, grant he'll, have, he'll uh... Suspension will end, his access to the archives will be reinstated, and this will not affect his, uh, review for tenure. That wasn't so hard. And everyone saves space. Have... Grub shoot over like a IM to the professor dude. <laughs> Gonna poke him on uh, Discord, space Discord. <laughs> hey, we got your position restored at Brain Professor. <laughs> Brainiac twenty twenty one two. Oh, I mean, it's the it's the internet. We go in the infosphere. Say what up. Now with uh with that problem dealt with you uh could tell us more about this request we asked of you earlier. Ah uh, yes, uh mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, Doctor Alamaya ukulele or something. Omaya, uh, Olamea Solastari, Solstarni. Well, I think I always gotta make jacked up names. I mean, I understand it's supposed to sound like alien and shit, <laughs> but I mean, if I can't say it, then I can't freaking say it. At least put pronunciation in parentheses or something. It's like they just put doctor and then they just freaking pounded their keyboard and hopefully letters came out. Hulk slam. Uh, she's like, uh, yes, yeah, so she is the interest in this. Uh, she's not here, though, because she's on personal leave, apparently. Uh, the next person who would actually know about this would be Albion's 21-2. He should be able to help you now that his archives uh, access has been restored. Hey, that's cool. Awesome. Now, if you please don't mind, uh, you know, I have, I have work to do. If you need something else, please feel free to talk to me. Okay. I'm gonna move you guys into a more, you know, bigger location here. So. Uh, and uh, since you convinced uh, Albion Twenty One Two to apologize, Professor Mulali offers you a Mark One Ring of Resistance. Okay. And Albion's Twenty One Two has forwarded you Bitcoin 
<laughs> uh, his earning from his recent guest lecture circuit of 700 credits. Man, that's not even like a third of a Bitcoin. I got disconnected and reconnected. Uh, <laughs> anyone got a really bad save? I've got one. Uh, I have a really bad save on Fort, which is a one for me. Yeah, same here. Well, my saves are identical, so it you actually does not benefit. My <laughs> will is a two. Ew. He will not save. <laughs> Do we want to give it to the will save or to the four saves? Honestly, I think I'd rather give it to the will save so they don't yeah. turn off. Yeah, so they don't like I think there's more mind control stuff in Starfire than there is four saves in general. Well, diseases and poisons, but... That's true. That last part, it was all disease. Everything's disease. <laughs> that was brutal. Yeah. You are going to approach a jungle soon. Is that 700 per person or 700 divided amongst your group? 700 total. Okay. What was that? I guess I missed the, total. The, the credit reward. 700 total divided amongst four. So. Brainiac uh, gave you guys his uh, recent lecture tour uh, award. Oh, that's, that's a thank you. He's such a kind person. And the Lushinta lady gave us the ring? Yes. So he's like, oh, thank, thank you, wonderful, uh, wonderful people for getting my axes restored. I see that you are trying to talk, you are trying to learn about Halukim Zan and his original journals. Correct about the temple that he observed in the jungle? You know it. Okay. He like looks, he's like going through some stuff. He's like, okay, I can go ahead. I can go ahead, and it's going to take me about eight hours to do some research. Uh, after this, I can give you a, a fairly complete copy of the Reckless Explorer's original account. Sounds great. Let's have a party, guys. So we're just chilling for a few hours? Yeah, just come back in eight hours. Cool. That 175 is the split, by the way. Yeah, I see. Grub's gonna hack the university mainframe and give himself an advanced degree. Is there anything particular you want to do on Castrovol for eight hours? Ooh. Eat elves. Find an elf. Find an elf brothel. Does anybody speak elven? Turns out, Rex picked up elven and Castrovelian recently. Okay, that's just gonna be that's gonna be useful later on. So you don't have to hire a translator. Plus speaks Castrovalian, but she does not speak Elvish. Yeah, the elves are a bunch of assholes here. They don't like to talk to people in not Elven, so... They're kind of like space Nazis in a way. Yeah. So, like elves. Yeah, but they're like more dickish in Starfinder. Yeah, it's because they've got the long history. Yeah, it's like they, they, they won't touch either. you, like they won't touch an alien without a glove type of, you know, dickhead thing. But just being safe. Yeah, it's just practicing safe interaction, interspecies interactions. Like really, they think they're trying to be nice, but really, they're just dicks. Okay, so eight hours later, we fast forward through and uh, we're back here magically. Because we're going to make up lost time that we did last week because of my bad. Or what, less time. Um. Uh. He's, you there? He's, the books. There's books all over the place. Uh. There's digital copies. There's physical copies. It appears that he's been busy in these past eight hours. Uh. You have a fairly complete account of the original explorer's uh records. He said, uh, "Albion's twenty-one-two speaks up." He says, "This is a most probably the most complete 
that you're going to get. However, there are significant gaps in some parts of it, and that's the best we could do. Uh, it appears either that Zan was neg negligent in documenting his journey, or someone else has removed documents that they shouldn't have. I've annotated this as the best I can in this short amount of time, and I would believe I've identified which are the most relevant parts. I believe I need to give you a handout now. I don't know if you have, if you have it in your notes yet or not. Let's see. Nope, you do not have it in your notes yet, but you do now. And here it is. Those are the most important things. Um, crap. Uh, we've been going for what? We have like another about fifteen minutes. We'll take a break. My wife needs me in about fifteen minutes. Okay, so that's the the notes that he is the, probably the most important. Well, damn, son! Thanks for the info. This is awesome. He's like, yes, and you can go ahead. This is a digital record. You can can keep on any computer you'd like. He hands you like a data chip or something, and you can just put this in whatever I, things. I plug it into I my throw brain. It into the, I throw it into the data pad that uh, was lent to us by the news team. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Utilizing this information, you think you could retrace Halakim Zan's footsteps from centuries earlier. Um, psh, 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 psh. In that eight-hour period, it was a televised interview with uh, Albion's 212 where he gave his apology and, you know, basically tore out that he was, was not trying to f ferment uh, racial, you know, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. He's sorry. Not sorry. Yeah, he did a good job. Um, he's like, however, there is a strange thing about the language that's not elven. You may want to talk to Professor Mulali about this. Okay, let's go do so. All right, you see Professor Mulali, and she's in the same spot she was eight hours ago, doing work. And she sees you, and she lights up. She says, thank you, Starfinders. Uh, the, the public seems to have calmed down since the apology, and uh, it appears that we can go back to normal work here. How may I help you? It's about these markings, this, this unusual text. Mm. Perhaps you can give us some clues. Most certainly. I am a Xeno, uh, Xeno linguist. She looks over it, and she's like, Huh. And you say that these are the same writings that appeared on the Drift Rock over by Absalom Station. Well, yes. these, like, the, these, these symbols and words here belong to a non-Elven group, Elven language group, found in association with a few known Elven sites on the continent of Ukalam to the east. I'm sorry, to the west. But we do have somebody here at this facility that is more knowledgeable about this language group. Unfortunately, it's Dr. Solstarni. Uh, let's see here. She's on leave, but we can attempt to contact her through her personal comm unit. See if we can get her to come in, even though she's on personal leave. One moment. She starts. We'd be happy to go visit her too, if necessary. Okay, we'll see if she's uh, she sees if she's uh, you know responding. And she pings like her personal comm unit a couple times. And you guys are like, it's like a montage. She's like trying to contact her, then tries to contact her home. Then she tries to contact a couple friends and family. And uh, no results. Nobody knows anything about her or where she is. Okay, and that's about, I, I trust this is odd. This is very odd indeed. Uh, Dr. Dr. Mulani, after talking to various people, she's like, I think we should report her to the police. Here, take this. Key this key card. This will get let you access her office. See if there's Sounds anything like of her colleague uh, up there.
I think we'll probably just go to her office and take a look around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds like the easiest way to do it. I don't know. Yeah, she's just like, it's on the fourth floor. And it's a heavy wood composite door electrically locked. But it doesn't matter because you got the key card. Okay, I'm just going to describe this to you. This office is in disarray with cabinet doors ajar, several stone artifacts scattered across the floor from open archival drawers, and a traveling bag open and half-packed. The computer on the desk at the far end of the room is dark, but a diode at its base blinks regularly. I immediately check go out. check it out. <laughs> uh... So Dr. Ulomea Solstarni is an archaeologist specializing in archaeoastronomic validation, the study of how ancient cultures viewed the cosmos and expressed those observations in their architecture, artifacts, and writing. Okay, her office contains an assortment of outdated astronomy tools from sundry planets. Um, and from what you've told me, Dr. Pro uh, Professor Mulally has told you that this person is, you know, pretty meticulous in her uh uh whatchamacallit she's not the she's pretty anal she's type one so this this array would not be normal um the computer does it look like someone came in and interrupted her in something it or, looks like or tr trashed the room to find something it looks like all of that so the computer, you give me a computer check. Nothing. Wow. The physical clues, okay. Treks. Physical clues. The cabinets are ajar. Okay, you're looking around for the less technological stuff, diaries and journals. Okay, you're looking through the cabinets, and then you can see Dr. Solstein's field suit, a basic set of Lishtuna temp weave fitted for Lisht, uh, Kash, Kashash, Kashita. Uh, although it has fallen from its hanger, well, Sistarni, uh, it looks like somebody tried to put it on hastily. Give me a perception. Uh, tricks. Excellent. There's a slight dent in the carbon fiber cabinet where it appears like someone violently collided with the uh, cabinet. Violently collided? Violently, like someone... What you I, do. I think there might have been a a, a, a confrontation here. Some, okay. Something has violently collided with this cabinet. Additionally, Grub, you notice on the table you find a printed version of... E Ewyrub Pascal uh, inviting the doctor to the five arches. Uh, yes. So it's just there. They got printed invitation to the five arches. You have no idea what that is or what that is, what it could be. But Ewyrub Pascal. Let me go ahead and uh, copy. So. Okay, give me a. Anybody give me a DC eighteen, a DC eighteen culture perception or academically relevant relevant profession check. One second, let me look at my sheet. DC eighteen culture, right? Yeah, twenty two culture. Mm -hmm. Well. Grub and Gloop, you see a printed scans of Halukim Zine's notebook. It's been heavily edited and annotated by red pen, by hand. Uh, it appears that this is only a fraction of the works of Halukim Zan. It appears like they are been moved around, too. Like, like, you know, you know how you would annotate stuff? You'd have it, like, organized, you know, when you're going through notes and stuff? This looks like it's been, like, moved around, like it's been intentionally trying to move it around. Okay, like somebody like took the notes and took like half of them and left some of them. Um, it's been disorganized. 
I want to use my once per session reroll on the computer. Okay. Computers. Okay. It's a tier two computer. That's why. Um. Okay, open you turn the computer on and you can look at her recent the computer's recent functions and Dr. Sostani's correspondence. Her personal counter notes that she is scheduled for a research sabbatical in approximately two months, as approved by her department head, Dr. Mulali. Okay. In two months. Not like not not today. <laughs> and the authorities in Taro Tar Turhalu Point on the east coast of Zukalam. Okay. However, one of the most recent files on the computer is a letter from Pr Professor Mulali granting Dr. Solstani leave to depart two months early to take advantage of special conditions in the field signed two days ago. Okay. Uh, I want to check that file to see where it really came from. Okay, give me a uh, computer check. Oh. This is a forged document generated by an off-site computer that spoofed Mulali's identity. There's also a series of 15 messages exchanged between Dr. Solstarni and a person named Dr. Ira Pascal regarding Solstarni's research into ancient elven settlements on, of Ukalam. The exchanges begin fairly cordially as Pascal and Solstarni discuss minor details of interest from the minimal research published about these sites. Uh, as the discussion continued, however, Pes Pacaral, or whatever his name is, grew, insistent and, uh, grew more insistent and attempted to control the Kastasha to meet with him at the cafe called the Five Arches in Quibot's Gateway District two days ago to appraise several artifacts he had recovered. She refused, citing a busy schedule. Give me a sense of motive. Do I need to do that or does he need to do Anybody, that? Anybody, I don't care. <laughs> you got, I'm assuming he just hacked, did the computer stuff and then he's showing everybody, so. Well, it's plugged into my brain, so I'm kind of just telling everybody. Okay, anybody who gets better 15 knows that the the, the Kashatha's messages convey, convey she was feeling increasingly skeptical about his motives. Okay, this is... Sure, he's being too forceful. Basically. You say Kasatha, right? Yeah, uh, Kasatha. That's the forearm humanoids. Really? Yeah, they're Kasatha. Oh. Altronus yeah. and their like. So apparently, so Star so Starney is a Kasatha. It takes all kinds. It takes a village sometimes. Well, I guess it would be easier to take notes if you had four arms. Yeah. I have four arms. Well, I don't know. Can you take notes with both of your hands? <laughs> yeah. As well. And a bite. Mm hmm. I can use my toes if I have to. Yeah, this Ira Pascal, Pac, Pac Rao, Pac Wall. Pacle? Yeah, it's a weird individual. We should see if we can find him. Yes, you can do that. You can look on the Infosphere if you'd like. Can we add him on Discord? Yes, you can add him on Discord. Uh, t -t 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 give me a... Culture, life science, physical science, or relevant profession check. All right, that'll do it. <laughs> Um, he is, uh, he's a series of articles about elven ruins uh, he published over the past six years. Uh, they appear to be well-established, uh, peer-reviewed academically articles. However, the articles appear in poorly vetted journals, or he cites, cites, uh, him, or he is cited as secondary authors. Um. Yes. Then we have a computer. Twenty-one. Uh, give me a twenty-one computer. All right. 
You detect inconsistencies in his online bios and records, suggesting that he might be entirely fictitious. This dude's a fake. It's a trap. Oh shit, who is he really? Da, da, da. As you finish that up, Professor Mulally and a couple Quibot police people walk into the office. Uh oh. Hello. We have proof. Have you found anything? Nope, not yet. Still looking. Roll me a bluff. R Trex is standing there with his mouth half open, just about to say something and just stops. I want to see if I can figure out who's behind this fake identity. Okay. So the det the police guy looks around. He looks like a film noir. Looks like tech uh, like uh, Tex. Uh, what's his name? Blake. Tex Murphy. Yes, Tex Murphy. Looks just like that. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yep. He's just like that. He's like, huh, well, looks like, uh, you know, he just he takes, takes a statement from each one of you guys, does a sweep of the room, and he... Un I clicked your link. There was no picture. Well, well trade. Tesla effect here. Trucks does point out the cabinet during his statement and mentions that he feels there was some kind of violent struggle in this room. You're like, oh, yeah. But he leaves out the uh, the other information since he didn't find it. He's like, okay, okay. Based on the evidence, blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, I think you guys are star finders, so uh, we're kind of stretched thin here today. Uh, how about this? I'm going to deputize you as uh, officers of Kobot temporarily because you are Starfinders and obviously you guys are, you know, trustworthy. And uh, I'd like you to sit figure oh, out the situation. Oh, we're deputized. Putting a lot of faith in these goblins, man. Well, you're Starfinders, man. They kind of like, you know, give you the benefit of the doubt, you know. And the professor kind of likes you because you helped her out. And you pretty much stopped like a PR nightmare. So, um, professor Mullally speaks up. Please, please find out what happened to to uh, Dr. Solstarni. Solstarni. She's a very wonderful I individual. She's a personal friend and I don't want anything to happen to her. We should probably investigate her domicile. Have I been able to figure out anything about who's behind this fake identity? Not yet. Only thing, only clues you really have, for hard clue, is that she was supposed to meet somebody at the the Erab guy by the five arches, which, based on Space Google, tells you it's like a cantina. Like a Denny's almost. Sweet. It's coffee shop. It's food time. All right, so let's take a break, huh? Sounds like a good, good. break. Ten minutes. Uh, see you. I'm gonna go to Denny's. I'll be back in a ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like a Waffle House. Five minutes for me, or less than that. Two minutes. Are you taking a, how long of a break? Five minutes. Okay.
All right, except if you're back. Nicole really go to Denny's. <laughs> they really go to Denny's though. I'm back. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's like, do they really? I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, but yeah. Just calling and Discord on my phone. Hey guys, I'm at Denny's now. I mean, I would, but I've been having stomach issues all night, so. Yeah, I had a little Caesars, and I immediately regret it. hard to pass up the five dollar pizzas here, you know? All right. So by investigating Dr. Solstarney's office, you know you likely learned that the E Rub Packaw guy is uh, blah 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 blah. It's a cafe dedicated, the uh, Five Arches is a cafe dedicated to serving disconcerting pellets of a dozen worlds. According to uh, Space Yelp, it is an elect electric dive with wildly variable food and drink quality combined with bizarre food pairings on the daily specials. Overall, the reputation suggests it's not a bad, uh, that it's not a place that right thinking individuals frequent willingly. So you guys are going there, right? So I guess goblins will fit in perfectly there. Yes. Super. A lot of numbers on this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just grabbed a random restaurant map. Uh, the Five Arches is readily apparent from the street, thanks to its glaring neon suggestive sign... Suggestive are the arches portals. golden? Yes, they are. The numerous portals in the district. A riot of different worlds, souvenirs, plasters, the interior walls. Each table, booth, and bench bears the name of one of the packed world's plants or habitable moons. Why are there thugs with guns? Because they're obviously bad people. I go in to order some a burger and fries. <laughs> hey, garçon, coffee. And then I go play on the playground while waiting. I don't think that's a playground. Honestly, I have no idea what it is. It's got ladders a, and boxes and two. That's a play place. place. That's a play place. You know, I didn't realize that, but it probably is. This is talking? a McDonald's map. Are we? Are we big enough as like kids that we could fit into? Yeah, like probably. Oh yeah, small. Not not Goro. Goro's gonna have to. This wait is a McDonald's, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Wow, this map is amazing. <laughs> this map is just. Are those McDonald's on front too? Look at the two arches. <laughs> I totally didn't put that together. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> this, this is a drive-through. This is hilarious. This map is even more better now. Check signs to see and watch what's going on. So you got anybody ordering food? Yeah. The proprietor, uh, Uli, is a female android. Uh, she takes your order and, uh, you know, she delights in creating authentic off-world cuisine that is utterly inconsistent. Uh, she takes your order, and she, it's basically the daily special is an unidentifiable alien, uh, avian cutlet smothered in a fig light fruit compote, compote, and served alongside a mashed bitter tuber from Triaxis. Yum. Okay. 
in the corner you have three core uh three people that are eyeing you guys up pretty good the one that's appeared that's, we notice anything special about them the one that's red highlighted he appears to be the leader I don't see him. The only red highlight I see is our friend who three squares bigger. Uh huh? Oh, um. <laughs> the one that has a red dot. He looks like he's a leader. Alright. I give him the stink eye. And go back to eating my food. Yank Luke grows three times that big. Watch out for the so glass door, space. buddy. So much space. kind of awkward in here, because the way it tells me how to go is really weird. <laughs> can anybody give me a sense motive? Sure can. I was watching those guys anyway as I took They're shady. Shifty. 26. They're obviously eyeing you up. Interested in you guys. Well, we are kind of an interesting I don't swing towards humans. Well, they're 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 lush tuna. I, just... I don't swing toward lush tuna. I think Gloop might swing some lush tuna around. Well, I'm just gonna do this anyway. Oi! What are you guys doing over here? You don't look like you belong here. I give him the stink eye. Belong? I'm sorry, did you see not see all the other shady characters walking around this place like us? Like you? I ain't never seen you around here. This is my neighborhood. I ain't never seen you around here. Because... It's a lovely neighborhood. I'm surprised, honestly, you guys didn't look at the security cameras back at the crime scene. Oops. Was he on the security camera? Do what? I said I take it they were on the security cameras back at the crime uh, scene. No, these people were not. Actually, I'm sorry, we have to back up because the police guy would have given you any d d details that you didn't come up with. So the cameras, the receptionist goes through and shows you the video logs and shows a trio of Korasha Lashtunas carrying heavy backpacks and wearing uniforms that entered the building two days ago in the late evening after all reception personnel had left. They took the stairs up. There's no footage of them on the floors or even leaving the building. You would have, they would have said that the uniforms are of the Gateway District Port Authority. Uh, you'll notice that they, you have eventually noticed that there's inconsistencies in the footage on several floors, including where the fourth floor where Dr. Solstarney's office is, uh, suggesting someone hacked into the office, uh, into, hacked into the building security camera, and looped footage of empty hallways. Sorry about that. That was important. I would have attempted to recover the missing footage. It is not available. Hmm. Anyways, you're like, I don't like the way you go looking at me. What are these well, guys I don't like the way you're looking at me. Uh, this, 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 this chump, Lash Tuna, tried to, like, you know, size me up the other day, too. Yeah. I'm gonna bluff them. That if they try and do anything, we're gonna wreck the floor with them. Hey, should I just do diplomacy for that or should I bluff them? That would be an intimidate. Intimidate? I can do that one. Only 
reason I say intimidate because there's actually an intimidate check here. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, hey, 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 we, we don't want no trouble here. Just saying. You guys reminded me of some chuff that came in here before. Maybe they can tell us something about Packwell. We, we don't want no trouble, especially in our golden arches here. Yeah, I know you don't. We, we know you don't. We're picking up what you're putting down. Just, you know, we gotta I'm put not up, picking yeah, up gotta, anything he's touched. We gotta, like, you know, put up a, you know... Gotta look tough. And we don't want no trouble here. What can I do for you individuals? You don't have to front if you already are tough. Don't make me get my gut out. I turn it sideways, I get a plus one to attack. Are you like in a game or something, man? I'll tell you what, I don't know that I really like you guys around here. So I'll tell you what. You got some questions, I'll ask you. You can ask it, and I'll answer it, and you guys just get up out of here, huh? Make it easier on all of us. You look like smart individuals. Have you attended a university recently? No, but some Dr. E. Rob something or other did. Sense motive. They have no idea what you're talking about. They're like, no, we just had some dude come down named E. Rob. Yeah, what's what's up with him? We're we're trying to find him. We have some questions for him too. Oh, he came down here a couple days ago asking, trying to get travel documents for 15 people to go to uh, Turalau Point. We got him some counterfeit visas, and some IDs for the Port Authority employees. They wanted to move some equipment or something. We just took some uh, ac legitimate academic visas and, uh, you know, did some stuff around it. Gave him some poor authority uh, badges and some stuff. They paid good. Uniforms too, I guess, huh? Yeah, uniforms, IDs, everything. And travel documents for 15 people. Because they wanted to go to the other continent for some reason. I don't know. Ain't nothing there but a bunch of bugs. To pay, they paid in, you know, paid in cred sticks. Untraceable. Did they mention when they'd be leaving? Don't know. Did their, did their business? I, I really didn't like them. I didn't like the, the cut of their jib. So I got out of here really quickly. Okay. We have more information we can get from them. They don't know much. Hmm. Do you guys so want some visas? We can definitely forge you some. Uh, good. Yeah. How many do you want? 300 apiece. How about we, you know, give it to us for free? No, nope, got a business to run. I can try and, I'm going to try and offer them some of my uh, wonderful products that I keep on me that I try and sell on the people. Can I use my con artist skill? Okay. Which is... Right. Is that a profession? Yes. Nope, that interesting. Uh, yep, dude, not buying. Not happening, they, only they selling. The, do they have the visas on them? I think I'd be an idiot to carry fake, you know, counterfeit visas on me. Jeez, you guys really aren't I'll, from around here. 
I wasn't asking if they had it on them, I was asking like if we thought we could them. Sorry. Uh do we wanna pay three hundred credits apiece, guys, or how do we wanna handle this? I don't need no visa, I have a badge. Yeah, we have a sort of. Well, are we still on, we're still in an area where we can use the badge, right? Like we're still deputized in this area. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't show it to those guys. Wow, well, was I gonna show? Like, you? oh, and uh, yeah, they needed some special permits for transporting fungal spores or something. Ooh. I don't know, but they needed permits for transporting weapons and other stuff. You know, it, at it least was... anything which is a crime yet. Well, they forged Just documents. false documents. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Do we want to show them the badge? And do we need the visa? You think, or can we just go without the visa? Well, you probably could probably get academic visas from the university quite easily. I, I think we can get over to the continent legally without having to resort to this. I don't want to give them any either. Yeah. Do we want the? Do you want to call the police on them and have them deal with them, or just leave them? I'm unscrupulous. I don't care. They're making money. Let them be. Yeah. Don't start no shit. There won't be no shit. Sounds good. Let them be. All right. Enjoy your avian souffle. Trucks takes one look at the dish and kind of vomits in his mouth. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Where are you going to want to go now? Grub, Grub eats Trex's dish. No! Oh! Can we locate Dr. Solstarny's living quarters? Yeah, I can tell you there's just not going to be anything there. Okay, then. I, I check there and find there's nothing there, and then we do whatever. The only other lead you have is the Port Authority. And that's probably where you would that's also where you would go from, you know, continent to continent. But you have no visas, so. And your visas, your, your deputization will definitely not go beyond there. We'll go, we'll not go there. Yeah, so we need to go back to the university and speak with our contacts there. Mm -hmm. mm. Or possibly the, uh, the, uh, what what do you call it the the uh, Quebec, uh official police or whatever the popos yeah the one that deputized it oh yeah yeah he's probably still there all right so you guys are heading back to the university. Anyone else got any other ideas? Oh, let's head back to university. Okay, head back to university. Dr. Uh, Ulani uh, is happy to see you. She's. Uh, did you find anything? We need a visa over to this place. Huh? The whatever. The, what's the continent name? It it seems that the the person in question. That was contacting uh, Doctor Solstarny was uh, seeking to make an expedition to Tralu much sooner than uh, your than your uh, what is it your peer was planning. He acquired uniforms that matched the footage that we saw in the in the uh, video feeds, the security feeds, and. Uh, they also picked up, uh, you know, enough gear for 15 people, which is really kind of odd. We only saw three in the video, um, but they also had some forged documents for permits for transporting weapons and something about fungal spores. Know anything about that? Fungal spores? No, that's really weird. It might just be a, a red, red herring in the batch, but who knows? We need to we need to figure out the best way for us to get over to. Uh, to uh, Turhalu Point on Ukalam. Well, I can tell you right now that you're not going to be able to fly there, uh, and you're not going to be able to sail there. 
she, she thinks a minute. The only way for you guys get to get there would be to go through the Adoria, the Iodora, the Elf Gates. Uh, the Port Authority maintains them, and uh, you're able to utilize them. You're going to need uh, visas, though. Uh, give me a few moments, and I will get you guys academic visas. She goes, uh, she can really cut through red tape if she can get his visas in just a few moments. Well, yeah, because, like, you know, academic, she's the administrator here, so she can give them. <laughs> she basically can just stop whatever she's doing, go to the computer, get the stuff, the travel documents, and, you know, let you do your thing. This is a prestigious university, you know. It's like if MIT were to, like, you know, go ahead and try to get you, uh, you know, hooked up with freaking, you know, stuff to do research somewhere. Okay, she comes back after a few minutes, and she hands each one of you guys uh, a, a visa with your identity on it. And she's like, "This will get you to, will get you to uh, Ukalam." I have a. Uh, let's see here. There's a. There's a. Tarallel Point is. Uh, there is a, a research facility there. Where there's research there, Doctor Kahir Al Nuaf. He is on a research there. Uh, uh, he will help you with anything he can, uh, with anything you might need. I just want to th personally thank you people for you know, pr looking for doing this. I know this is, you know, a little bit outside the scope of what you're here for, but if you find Dr. Solstar, yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find whatever you need about the temple. Somehow I think the two things are linked. Okay. Thank you so much for all your assistance. I'm glad we were able to help you, too. Please, find Dr. Solstarny. Bring her back in one piece, hopefully. Hopefully she's not some fungal parasite thing. Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah. Okay. So we're off to the other continent. Before we take off, is there uh, any way we can pick up some uh, stuff to protect us against poisons uh, and diseases? Yeah, there's stores here. Stores? All right, sounds good. But what should we get? Well, I, re I remember reading through the notes, and there was some kind of monkey bat scorpion thing that that bothered him in the forest. I would hate to Monkey run a fell or something like that and not have <laughs> I mean, like like what, what what stuff should we get that like works and helps. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh maybe we should visit a pharmacy. <laughs> there are plenty of those. They have socialized medicine here. Does anyone have a med kit? Do not. I mean, there's serums of healing, but I haven't seen anything about, like, antitoxins and whatnot. Honestly, I really haven't even looked.
Well, I think I am going to pick up a backpack and maybe another med patch since we don't seem to have a doctor in the house. No doctor in the house. No, but Floosh played one on a movie once. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's good enough. Yeah. She's like regular Doogie Hauser. She can tell you all about them scapples and... Scapples. Yes. It's all Dr. Needs, right? Scapples? Yeah. That and... Uh, scapples. It's that's moving. not a scapple. This is a scapple. I've I've seen Grey's Anatomy. I know what's up. More like it's probably about more like Space Anatomy now. All right, so you guys going to the Port Authority? Sure. Yep. Okay, you go to the Port Authority. It's um, not used. It doesn't have heavy traffic. It always has light. It appears to have light traffic. It's on the east side of the city. So the the portals do not interfere with the harbor or spaceports. Okay. It's a very professional and organized thing. If anybody's ever been to like a like a like a port or transport thing, it's like customs, mm -hmm. but like you know, bigger and like a port. Okay, so we're just looking for a ship, or do we already have a ship? I forget. Now, what happens is you go through the portal, like, you know, Warcraft style, and you just teleport oh. across the freaking continent. Okay. It's a ring gate. Yeah, it's like Stargate, but, like, you know, that's cool. Controlled by elves. No, these are controlled by Lish Tuna. Whatever. See, the, the, the different species, they stay on their own continents for the most part. This is the Lestuna wow, continent. Wow, what a surprise. The elves stay on their continent, and the bugs stay on their continent. Alright, so we're over in the other continent now, right? Oh, you guys just want to go there? Okay. Alright, cool. Okay. No, we need to ask around about this dude that we're looking for. Oh. Yeah, we need to see about the expedition that traveled through. Oh, good call. There's port workers. You can flag one down relatively easy, and they take they take you to a manager. The gate controller, Rayari. It's a female list tuna. She's very professional, and she finds the idea that uniform employees of the port authority breaking into the university a very disturbing one. She gives you the logs. She pulls up the logs for the past three days and confirms that no employees were sent to the university. Furthermore, she knows that few people travel to Turhalau Tur Tur Point, which is a largely decommissioned military base that now serves as a research station. Based on the information you give her, there is only one group that fits a description of a team of 15 carrying laboratory equipment, cryogenically frozen organic compounds, and specialty foodstuffs with authorization from Krobot University of Xenoarchaeology and Xenoanthropology. According to the records, customs confirmed the contents of all the crates, though the documentation was too sparse for her liking. She shows you the passenger data, which include, indicate the, the group consisted of a Kasatha, a Shurin, two humans, and 11 Lashtunas. She was suspicious upon the group, but upon reviewing the records, but... Uh... Yeah. She was suspicious about the group, but she let them go because they had the documentation. And since you guys have visas, she is most certainly willing to grant you access to the gate, priority access to the gate. Um, she tells you the continent has been long considered off-limits for colonization by any of the planet's three dominant species, with only a few dozen military and scientific outposts established around its extensive coastline. Okay, a handful of NGOs oversee, oversee the sanctity of Ukalam, and they only permit travel there for academic and resupply purposes. Is 
So let me tell you what you guys do know now, which is great. This is good shit. Because you have the translated documents of... Uh, uh, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. You have the translated stuff from the dude. Mr. Zahn, Dr. Zahn. How Kuim Zahn's notes? Yes. Uh, you have enough to retrace the Halukim's, you know, his trek. In addition, because you have Dr. Solstarni's notes and documents, and the documents, you have a plus two circumstantial bonus to survival check to navigate Ukalam's wilderness during part two. So make sure that you have a notice that you have a plus two to sur circumstance bonus to survival checks to navigate the place. Because you have both pieces of information. We'll keep that in mind. Um, you would have gotten a cool inferno knife had you, you know, killed one of the, you know, killed the guy, the thug. But Don't you didn't. Start nothing. There won't be nothing. Yeah. That's kind of stupid, anyway. I think. Sounds like it was a poorly written encounter in order to give the PCs more knowledge uh, yeah it was it's really awkward it's i don't like how it's written it seems it seems, seems like a lot of it was i don't know maybe i'm just a bad gm and it probably could probably has something to do with it but you know i could i could have pushed it into a fight but i just didn't feel like it was you really flowed that way And it was only, it's a CR1 encounter. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't know why they have us do it. Yeah. Oh, well. Especially with level three or fours. Yeah, leg, it's legit a like, CR1 encounter. Like, it, it's, you know, you guys breathe on them and die. So, it's not really, I don't know. It's kind of dumb. So, we're just going to, you know, so I just, we'll do it that way. You we'll start no shit, there won't be no shit. Uh, so yeah, okay. And so you're you're giving priority access to enter the Stargate. I mean, Elfgate, and you walk through, and the Stargate thing, and you get you. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You guys are a bunch of nerds, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you appear through their gate. Okay. The station at Tarlu Point sets a tip of the broad peninsula covered in rolling plains and expenses of tall, pale green grasses that shimmer with violet, violet hues in the wind. Short-lived blossoms of magenta fungus tower near 20 feet over the landscape, although many have begun to wilt and others are marred by bite marks of half a dozen sizes. Trumpeting calls echo throughout the plains as immense six-legged creatures with long, swooping necks trek steadily across the grass towards the western jungles. Beyond the rises, the singing range, its peak, peaks barely visible through the haze. So it's like Jurassic World <laughs> with fungus. Cool. Yep. Turalau Point. It's at the tip of a broad peninsula characterized by rolling plains, plains, seasonal blooms of immense fans of magenta fungus, and expanses of tall green grass. Um, this would be a great to level up to level 4. Okay. Didn't we already do that? I don't think so. I did. Wait, are you guys level 4? Yeah, you told us the levels of the 4 at the end of last session. <laughs> well, then in any case, we're good then. We'll keep going. Uh, the military, This military outpost is decommissioned. It's been decommissioned for more than 20 years, and it maintains a token security force to keep the wildlife at bay. But industrious researchers have converted most of its gun turrets and bunkers into greenhouses and biology labs. Uh, you have a description. Of of, have. Yeah, of course, because they're a bunch of nerds. Uh, Dr. Dr. Al Nuwaf, you guys have been given him his basic description, and he is actually waiting for you at the gate. 
as soon as you come out. He's like, welcome, Starfinders. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I mean, Ukulam. Hello. Such an auspicious time meeting you here. Auspicious is one word for it. Indeed. The group that came before you was uh, departed into the wilderness a little more than a day ago. You say a day ago? A little more than a day ago, yes. Just missed it. There's a large band of less two armed less two and a mercenaries. It seemed really out of, out of touch, but their paperwork was in order. Based on what I overheard from there, they're heading towards some elven ruins to the northwest to perform archaeological survey, but I'd have no idea what type of survey would require so many armed individuals. In addition, they ended, were under the work, oversight of Dr. Solstarny. I've worked with her on occasion, but, you know, she's, she appeared like she was uh, groggy, maybe ill, but I just brushed it off that maybe she had a rough trip through the gate. It's likely they drugged her to make her more Successful. accommodating. Hmm. I've been instructed to give you any assistance that you necessarily require. Uh, should any of you require, I have one scratched up suit of Lashuna Ringwear 2 armor. I have a carbon steel curved blade. I have a sticky bomb grenade too. I have four doses of tier 1 antitoxin. I have four doses of spray flesh. I can give you guys, uh, each of you, three weeks of field rations. And I can give you up to 100 credits of standard ammunition per person. And access can, to the recharging station. Can you give us all of that? <laughs> <laughs> if you need, uh, I can also give you backpacks, uh, a consumer backpack and a mass-produced tents. Okay, and I just went through and outfitted myself before we left. I know that's <laughs> for gear. That's why I was laughing on the inside. I was like, <laughs> but the antitoxins are nice, so definitely want the antitoxins and the spray flesh. Uh, I'm less concerned about the weapons. I picked up some rations for myself. I've got the ammo I need. How, how many weeks of rations do you have, sir? I, uh, if you're gonna I walk up one, you're gonna want three weeks of rations. Trust me. All right. Well, then I'll take I'll take another. I'll take all three of the weeks he's got. Then. Her person. I right? picked up an industrial backpack too. So. Okay. I'll take all of his options. And and we'll need tents probably. But I'm gonna let Goro carry the tents. <laughs> he's like, uh, I do want to warn you that it is a 120 mile trek, northwest, west west northwest of this, of this place. Through a trackless expanse of subtropical rainforest. So do yes. we each want to write down our own dose of antitoxin, or do you <laughs> want to keep a, a group loot that uh, Gloop's carrying? I say do group loot; it's gonna be easier. Sounds good. I will reload. I will reload some of my ammunition. Um, can we use some of that 100 credits for spare batteries? You can use it for ammunition, which is batteries, right? Yeah, spare batteries. That's why yeah, I like two I batteries. <laughs> it's actually less than two batteries, but that's fine. One spare battery and uh, some spare rounds for my my projectile weapon will be fine. I also refilled the flame pistols reservoir. Okay. Which I think is kind of like a small tank on the side of my backpack is kind of how I envision it. It kind of reminds me of like a, like a paintball guns uh, tank. <laughs> yeah. Hold up, man. I need some more compressed air. Okay, I'll be. I gotta be right back. I need to use bathroom real quick. Okay. He's like, uh, I hope you people are, you know, uh, are okay with traveling through the jungle. It's uh, it <laughs> we're goblins. We know how to survive. Well, okay. So 
So basically, this is what you're looking at. You're uh, assuming a base speed of 30 feet. The PCs can cover about 12 miles each day. The trek takes a uh, quick trek across Ugalan will not be easy. On uh, this region, days are long, hot, and muggy, with temperatures rising above 90 Fahrenheit shortly after dawn. As a result, you must endure very hot conditions for 12 hours each day. Your armor can provide with environmental protection for one day of per level of armor. Uh, one day per level of armor. And if used sparingly, this could protect the group for most of the journey to the Temple of Twelve. Okay. Thanks to the jungle's density, the maximum distance which you can spot creatures is 2d8 times 10 feet. Except when noted, this vis this visibility makes uh, navigation difficult. But you have the note, so it should be uh, which provide bearings taking at several key landmarks. Rather than the survival check each hour, have the PCs attempt either a DC blah 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 survival check once per day, or to use orienteering or to use the orienteering task to avoid getting lost, or a survival check to perform the following tracks instead. Oh God, I hate this. I already hate this already. Successful check allows you to make a full day's progress. Uh, following tracks takes more time and concentration, and each successful check allows you to travel three quarters of a day's progress. You can do map stuff for, for a higher DC or tracks for a lower DC, but it takes longer. And since you have both of the files, keep in mind that you get a plus two to survival checks. And Trex will be encumbered while wearing his backpack. That's why you just drop it when combat starts. Exactly. That'll be his standard first action. Free action, drop the backpack. Yeah, it's like a, the Pathfinder, what is that, like the backpack that like, falls for free or something? I don't know. I always tried to get myself to a uh, to a handy haversack or similar. I think I'm going to change the character sheet and make the uh, the bulk portion of the inventory a number, and then. That way it can do automatic calculation. Okay. All them field rations that are weighing me down. Yeah. It's a damn shame that small creatures don't eat less food. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I got a 20 um, strength. I can carry everything. Literally everything. Give them to him, shit. So apparently I have to track how far you guys have gone each day. Especially if you get lost. Um, this is stupid. But we're going to do it. Cause it's Sounds like a pain in the ass and just a numbers tracking game. Yeah. Yeah. So what's 112 miles a day, so it's like 10 days. So we need at least 10 orienteering checks, and then you need to make 10 checks to see if we encounter anything each day. Uh, yeah, but one of them I'm ignoring. Because it's stupid. You know, we're just not going to do this. So what do you guys' take tens on survival? Fifteen. Plus, is that including the plus two? Yep. Yeah, my take ten, including the plus two, would be twenty-two. Yeah. So you'll make the check no matter what, because it's a DC-18 to orienteer. So we're just going to hand wave that. Hey guys, I have a map. I can see geolocations. I think we're good. You can use star stuff. 
and orienteer it. Not to mention, oh, wait a minute. Grub, do we have a flying drone yet again, or is he a uh, No, it's still a tank. Is he Johnny He's a tank, He's okay. Johnny Five, you know. Johnny Five is alive. Actually, that's exactly what he looks like right now. He's got treads. That might not yep. be so good in the jungle. No, disassemble. I bet my kids would really love those two movies. I'll you know, have to try and find those. It holds up. Yeah, yeah it, watched, it's fun because we, we haven't really day with my kids. We haven't really hit that. Uh, haven't really hit that technology level. Not really. No, it's just it's a good story. I mean, in the beginning of the first movie, it's like kind of goofy with the old cars and stuff, but you know, and the big hair. But <laughs> the movie still holds up. And no one has cell phones. Yeah, which is a good thing, I think. I'm around 180 freaking monsters that have their cell phones every day. You so, know your 20 strength there only only gives you 10 bulk before you become encumbered, right? 10 bulk's a lot, man. Well, I'm at 10.3 bulk with my armor, weapons, and all my gear in my backpack. Jesus, dude. I'm at four. That's a lot of gear. It's a lot of gear, though. I'm holding, I'm holding three different pistols. Uh, plus, I've got engineering kit, serums, med patches, data pad. I picked up a fire extinguisher in case. I picked up some alloy, uh, some uh, some cable. I picked up a hundred feet of cable. Why don't you spread the load around, crashing. bro? Well, I've got I'm a saying, giant generator on my back. I mean, if he's carrying uh, one week of field rations is one bulk. So if he's carrying nine weeks of field ration, that's only three other characters, three weeks for three other characters. That's already nine bulk. I'm getting strapped up to saying? my... How much can the drone carry? Drone. The drone's got a strength of 15. So he can carry six, or what is that, 15... Uh, eight bulk. Yeah, why well, can't you? seven. Load that thing up, dude. I mean, I can carry twenty-one bulk. What? Ten. Yeah, half your strength is your unencumbered carrying capacity. That's why I say I just drop my backpack in a fight. Well, you don't want to have unencumbered. You don't want to be encumbered because it slows you down then. Be faster than everyone encumbered. Base speed is fifty. Well, if I ditch one week of field rations, then I'll be at nine, and I will not be encumbered. Because it'll be a ten-day trip. Because ten-day trips there and ten days back, so you'll need what, like three weeks of rations. So I'm at nine point three, which technically only counts as nine. And with the uh, industrial backpack giving me plus two, uh, actually, I need to get down to eight. So, hey, why don't we put this titanium alloy cable line on the drone? That's one one bulk I can get rid of. It's 100, 100 feet of line. No, disassemble. No, no, I'm giving him extra know, stuff. He's just going to carry it. <laughs> and carry a long cable for me. I actually put out the creds for it, too. I prefer the second one where he gets all pissed off. Rambo. I'm just going to leave it on my sheet and say it's on Grub's drone. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I no, 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 like, I just want to make sure that you guys understand this is like 120 miles freaking th through a jungle. So. Yeah, I figure I was figuring it was a trek, and so I was outfitting for crap I thought I might need. We might need. And indeed, you do. And we're going to avo avoid. Tra event number one, which is the Trampoline Titans, is basically a stampede of big-ass freaking creatures started by a rifle shot from, like, freaking half a mile away. Yeah, I think we'll just avoid that. Exactly, because it's like 20, it's like 10 rounds of, oh, what was it? You have to make so many checks. It's just so stupid. Uh, <laughs> I read through it, I was like, I'm not doing this. The skill challenge or something? Yeah, it's like, you know, you have to do this thing, and then you have to, you have to cure a number of successes equal to three times the number of PCs. 
And so that's no. like 12 <laughs> successes. And I'm just like, no, that's dumb. So, yeah, so basically what happens is like day two or something, you guys uh, see a gunshot from like far, like a half a mile away on top of a mountain somewhere and freaking, uh, you know, and set, hits one of the freaking big ass freaking rhino things and chases you down. Hold on, my wife seems to me. All right, so we're going to skip event one because it's stupid. And uh, day three or four, uh, you start, you know, seeing these these crazy looking looking monkey things in the in the wilderness. They're not attacking you or anything. They're just kind of bothersome. Let me show you a picture. They make weird noises at you. Does that pop up? It did not. Does that pop up? Is it on a map or is it on a handout? It's on a character sheet. It says show to players and yeah, nothing happened apparently. Not working. Well, I have a picture of it and we're going to make it big. Here we go. Control Z. Wow. Does that? No. Was it Shift Z? It's Shift Z. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I see it. You've got like <laughs> little wings and a stinger on their tail. Yeah, the scorpion monkey thing. It's the damn sting bats. They ain't attacking. If they ain't starting nothing, I ain't starting nothing. There's specific things here, okay? Uh, so yeah, there's few lasting archaeological. The Elven Otia culture created few lasting archaeological works during its occupation of Eastern Ugalam. Among them, the bridge that you crossed to escape these freaking space rhinos. Okay. Uh, and a grand watchtower that stood vigil of what near was the edge of the jungle. The outpost towered near 300 feet, peeking over the trees, emergent lair, and topped by an elaborate observation deck. With a century, within a century of the elves' abandonment of the region, however, the observation deck decayed and toppled from its form, uh, from its lofty height, leaving only behind a stone post card with the elven laws. But after a millennia of erosion, even those have faded, barring a few sh sh sheltered inscriptions near the base. When Halakim Zan found the site, he believed it was a mighty monument and dubbed it the Rune Obelisk. So, uh, as you approach the Rune Obelisk, the soil uh, decomp deposition and plant growth have covered most of the building. Blah blah blah. Um, you spot basically. Yeah, it's dumb. Give me a life science check, somebody. I assist Grub. Well, that is enough. These are wild Relayan figs. Yeah, they appear to be being thrown at you. Something's throwing figs at us. They're probably the monkeys. Wild Rillian figs are rather tart, but safe to eat, and a number of ripe figs have fallen from the branches and land on the ground. Basically, these monkeys have been freaking... These must be flying monkey scorpion things have been following you around, uh, saying, Karu ki ki! Karu ki ki! Throwing fruit at you. Some even go close to you and touch you like they're counting coup. Uh, but none of them have been engaging you in any kind of significant combat. They're small, light creatures, so but they're like your size, so except for Goro there. Um, yes, and it appears like as you walk towards this thingy, as you get close to it, they just there's hundreds of them, and they're all uh, they're, maybe they're living there. There's a noise here that is just crazy and insane. And it's loud, 
and there's four monkeys towards the uh, middle and upper part of the map that are throwing bigger things at you. They're like rocks. Oh. Like, like they are trying to taunt you. Quite honestly, as I dodge rocks. Oh, my God. I think we need to investigate the structure more. Uh, we might have to kill some of these local indigenous creatures to get there. I'm sorry, did I say th hundreds? There's only, there's 13 of them. Uh, That's a small colony living there. Uh, yeah. Trex feels somewhat bad about in invading their territory, but I think we need to investigate the structure. Does anybody have sense motives? We all do. <laughs> I don't have any ranks in it. The answer is we have an envoy, right? So mm. It would appear that the four up there are taunting you as if they want to, you know, engage in martial combat of some sort. <laughs> yes. It would appear, Flus, that they are trying to taunt you to go to the, the to the obelisk. But they were also taunting you and throwing stuff at you because they want to annoy you and possibly fight you. They don't have projectile weapons. Or like they're using figs. Yeah, they're going to be outmatched sorely. I plan to fight them. <laughs> okay, so let's do this initiative thing. Let me pull up the character sheet thing. This is my first time using this, so we'll see if it works. Um, I found that if I put a character on a like on a character like an NPC on a character sheet, I can like roll combat stuff. Yeah, it makes it really easy. It's all gonna roll to you though. No, I changed the macro text and I just totally oh, okay. whisper GM things. Yep, that's one way to do it. Now the problem is, do all of the icons represent the same character sheet? Yeah. But then they're all going to have the exact same hit points, and when you change one of them, it'll change all of them. What? Because they, all are, they are all the same character. I don't know how to do this, then. What you can do is, instead of representing the character, you can just use one to represent the character, and roll stuff from it, and then... Keep track of the hit points and stuff on another one. Oh yeah, that's. What or you can make multiple characters, stick them in a folder, and just not look at the sheets. Those are the two ways I've done it. Hmm. Well. Haha, -ha, it does work. So we're all initiated. Except for Flus. Of course, Flus has got to be the special one and not be on the, the thing. I can't. didn't have her. There she goes. Okay, Flus, you're first. Apparently they can fly too. Do they actually fly or is it just like gliding like flying squirrels? It says clumsy maneuverability. They can sort of fly.
Sorry, I was muted. I was trying to talk. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't actually see them. Um, does this stump give partial cover? Yes. Does that give partial cover? Yes. Okay. I'll have her move up here and take a shot at the closest one. Okay. Who doesn't see anything? I see him now. Okay, I see. Twelve to hit. That hits. Six damage. Okay. Gloopy. It'd be really big overkill. So five. 15, 20, 25, 30, 45, 50, to throw my star knife, one directly in front of me. And you miss. That's because I rolled a one. And monkey guy, he flies over to spy. He flies, which I call it, flying squirrel style next to you. All right, I'm going to use my attack of opportunity against him. Okay. Well, he's most certainly not wearing armor. Dean damage. How much? 16? He did minimum damage. You get a plus 15 to damage, Goro? I do. That's insane. My bite. Are you using that bite collar? The bite ring. And he tries to sting you with his, his tail and does not do so. This guy is going to fly over here. And attack you with a plus two. So a 20 hits you. Yes, 20 hits me. Uh, give me a fort save. Okay, apparently you're poisoned now, but it doesn't really tell me much about it. It says track dexterity frequency one round for six rounds. What the hell does that mean? Well, poisons are done in a track system, like in Pathfinder Unchained. Okay, what 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 page is that? <laughs> I'm checking it right now. Under environment. In the game mastering section. Yeah, I figured that. Environment. Probably. Afflictions begins on page 414. Dexterity poison track is on 415. There we go. So, dexterity. Okay, how does this work? So, you're sluggish? I guess? That's cool, I guess. So it's frequency once around for six rounds, so you have to roll a save every round now or something? That's the way poison was anyway. Okay. Oh, it's... What does it say? So it's frequency one dash round for six rounds. How many saves, how many saves does it take? It says cure one save. So as soon as he gets a save, he stops progressing down the track. So he can, um, he can go sluggish, stiffened, staggered, immobile, then dead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't die. You're poisoned. And you take 
18 damage, uh, 5 damage. So you're minus 2 to penalty to reflex saves, dexterity based ability checks, attack roll skill checks, DC respells, blah 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 by 2. And you're flat footed. Does the adventure path give us any information about the antitoxin since it's not in the core rulebook? Um, I can look. I don't remember that. That 10 misses you. Let me look at that really quick just because it probably will come up. Um, it really doesn't tell you anything about that? Is it in the Alien Archive at all? Do you know if it's in the Alien Archive or the I uh, don't believe first, so. first, first contact? Cuz I'm not I could check first contact, yeah, but I'm not seeing it. I have first contact right here. My physical copy of it. No. Really glad I got this on free RPG day though. Uh, are you serious? It doesn't give us anti. It gives us antitoxin, but doesn't it freaking give us antitoxin. Are you sure? For these, when you're cured, you're cured. So all I have to do is make one. If I make one successful save, I'm cured. Yeah. Let's look at the index. Oh, as long as I don't ma make seven or less five times in a row. Then I'm fine. Oh, it does list antitoxin in medicinals next to trade goods. Okay. See, they got equipment. It's in other purchases with clothing and everything else. It's. I don't like the way they they did up gear. In here. It could have been better. Yes. Antitoxin. Gain a bonus equal to 3 plus the medicinals tier to saving throws against poison for a number of hours equal to this tier. A oh, plus 4. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be okay. And Trex, it's your turn. Alright, we got monkey swarming gloop, huh? The big bad mofo. Uh, Trex is going to use his trick attack. Moving what? behind this stump to take cover, uh, drawing his laser rifle as he does. I'm sorry, hold on a second. And shooting. Okay. I need to go turn the oven on real quick. BRB. All right. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry. My wife wanted me to turn the oven on. Not a problem. Trick attack, what? Uh, yeah, Trex moved into cover and drawing his laser pistol and shooting at the monkey closest to him. Uh, all part of a trick attack. Okay. Is that EAC? Uh, 21. Is that B20 plus CR? Is that... Uh... I don't know what is these guys' CRs. I'm up. thinking their CRs are probably uh, one. Yeah, one. Okay, so it does. So I'm going to make it flat-footed so I have a better chance of hitting it. Minus two to armor class, no reactions. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, was it five damage? I, it would be six damage because I add one for the trick attack. Okay, you're good. Probably important to track ammo here. And monkey, they're playing monkey games. They're monkeying around. 
And does the 17 hit you, uh, Gloopy? Uh, yes, because I am poisoned. Okay, so three damage, and does the poison affect you again? How does that work? No. I don't know. You're poisoned or not. Okay, so you're still poisoned. Okay. Okay. Grubby. Get your stinking paws off my grubby gloop. Mm, shooting this one right here. God, poisons suck. Yeah. Um, just realize that. Did, did you take the damage, hit point damage for the poison? It doesn't say there's hit point damage, is it? Uh, under poisons, it says uh, the victim loses a number of hit points equal to the poison's DC minus 10. Oh. If, the victim, if a victim is exposed to multiple doses of the same poison, oh, they I must see. attempt a separate save for each dose and progresses to the next state on the poison track for each failed save. Poisons are fucking deadly. Holy shit, so you take one hit point damage for the poison and then you roll a DC again. Yeah, but if I make it, then I'm cured. Yes. Right, of that dose. We still got the one that's t affecting you. Is that 11 to EAC? Yeah. Okay, you hit it. Uh, nine damage. I am cured of that dose. Okay. Wait, they're dosed and then on your for the saves? For the other one. Yeah, it's a separate save for, for each the dose. Saves, though? Yeah, for everything. You lose hit points equal to the poison DCs minus lot minus ten, and you get multiple. This is this is nasty, dude. Poison ain't no joke. That's nasty, af yo. <laughs> okay, th three of the monkeys look pretty bad off though. Floose. Uh, gonna shoot the one that's closest to her. Okay, go for it. And you shoot the monkey dead. Good. The monkey is going, rah, 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 making monkey noises. Gloopy. Save. Actually, I'm, actually, I was not affected by the second one. I know, but the first one, though. Like, I didn't have to make a save for it because... It's only reflex saves, dex based ability checks, attack rolls, and skill checks, not AC. The second attack did not actually hit me. Mm. My AC is 18. Okay. The AC, if it meant AC. Those things are AC. It's based. Yeah, on the next step of the dexterity poison track, you lose your dex bonus to AC, so... Yeah, I hope you'd save right now. He did, he rolled a 22. Oh, I mean, I wish I could oh, use yeah, that Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, but, I just right. Wait, wait, no, that was... Mm. That was for the one he didn't so actually receive, well, but 18 works too. Yeah, you're good then. You shake it off! Alright, so... Kill some wait, monkeys. So... Here... It's 16 to 1. That one died, right? That's the one that died, or no? Uh, which one? 16 to 1. 12? 12 or 13 to 1. The one I hit before? I don't remember which one you hit. Or any of them injured besides the one that's dead? Yes, the ones to your left, to your right, are injured. I'm going to hit the one that's injured with one of my full attacks, and I'm going to hit the one that's not injured with my other full attack. Is a... 24 for 19 points of damage. For the uninjured one? Yes. For the injured one. The injured one took 19. Okay. It's dead. 21. 
If it, if it if an AC fourteen hits it. Yeah. All right. So there's only one monkey. Only one, one monkey left. And it's that monkey's turn, and he's going to flee. Withdraw from one threatened square. And you're probably just uh, I still threaten that next square. Yeah, I, know, I, so. I still threaten that next square. Take your own. Um, oh, I'm going to let it go. It's a mindless. It's it's not a. And Don't let him go. He's going to come back with more. Why the fuck would you let it go? No, they're not, but they're definitely encouraging you to check out the obelisk. And uh, perception people. I don't think they're going to come back with more. Not after what we did to them. That's not what the professor's notes said. Perception. 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 You all see shiny trinkets that look like loot at the base of the obelisk. I'm oh. sure the I'm sure the sting bats have been collecting them. Well, yeah, we're not in combat anymore, so stop. You see, from where you're at, Gloop. You see. At the base of the uh, base of the obelisk, you see what appears to be three Mark II serums of healing, and it's not the base. I'm sorry, it's about ten feet up. Oh, I'm gonna go walk towards stop. it and get, and get rid stop, of them. Stop! 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 And yeah. roll me a perception, gloop. Does the does the place look stable? Oh yeah, it looks stable as hell. <laughs> what is an engineer's I think? Gloop, it looks perfectly normal for you. Looks like shinies. Alright, I'm gonna okay. walk up and take a look. Make sure you fully. ain't seeing something bad. Stop. People Roll for initiative. Oh, what do I see? Oh, it's a deadly you. plant thing. Look what you did now. You just had. Look what you made me do. Look at what you made me do. I don't get it, Chewie. It's just a hunk of meat. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end the session. Right there. Nice. Dun, 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 the evil plant creature. <laughs> hey, so I kind of asked in the middle of that combat, but would would anyone be interested in seeing a, a poison disease tracker on the character sheet, that would or would it only be, or would it only be useful if it automatically adjusted your values? I think it would only be useful if it automatically adjusted the values. And that sounds like a hell of a lot of work for you. It is. That's a whole lot of sheet worker. API type stuff. It's probably, it's probably easier just to use the the the, the, the little button here, is, you know, like does he track one, two, three? You know, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I would I would do some kind of radio button thing, but then it would have to, or a checkbox thing, or whatnot, and it would have to then apply the other the other attributes and things would have to look at it and see if there's an adjustment. You know, um, I'm gonna like pain, I'm gonna yes. think about it. I'm, I'm planning on doing a lot of work on the character sheets over the holidays as I'm not going to be working and I'm going to be on vacation and I'm not going to be doing anything. So I'm looking at things that I want to kind of add, change, update. Some of the things I'm looking at, like on the augments column of the character sheet, I think I want to get rid of the price column there which is basically useless and give a little more room for the augmentation name and notes. Does anybody want to see what Hero Lab beta looks like? Hero Lab online. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do screenshots? Yeah, I am. Hold up. 
Maybe but I'm already I'm already using it. So. Yeah, I know. That's something I know you are, but let me bring up my Technomancer. Other things I'm looking at are making the inventory so it automatically calculates your encumbrance values. Well, that's cute. And of course, it's going slow as hell. I think I'm going to see if I can do that poison and disease tracker thing. I'll probably put it in a in a separate little closable, a collapsible area, like spells or inventory and stuff. That way you could open it up if you need to use it, and then, you know, hopefully I can have it. There's a, there's a lot of info there for the different things, but I think maybe I can have things check it and utilize it. It might be useful. The other thing I want to try and do is get uh, armor check penalty added to to automatically get included in the armor. Okay. Uh, who wants it? I'll PM it to you because apparently I'm not supposed to do this. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> no, it's cute. It, it, looks, it looks nice. Send it to me, sure. I'll take a look. Who, who's this? Nicole. Okay. Gotcha, Nicole. I'm curious to see what yours looks like. If it looks the same as mine. Probably. It's just a technomancer, so I was so pissed when like they freak I couldn't couldn't I couldn't make a fucking uh couldn't make a half org for like a like a good freaking like three weeks. Oh yeah, because they didn't have it in the list. Yeah, like like they just forgot it. You know, like the only you, race you know they what forgot. Else, you know what else they don't have in the list? What? Or in their tables is fusion seals. What? Well, that's they've got all the fusions, 